Hello, everybody. This is Life Questions, and I'm Bill Harris, your host. We're so glad you could join us. Um, and you know, many of you have been sending us your questions that you're seeking answers to about life. And these questions come to us about a wide range of issues. And we've turned them over to a panel of local ministers who have agreed to review and research them. And today they are joining us for a full discussion of their findings. First of all, on our panel, we have Pastor Rich Reiki, of the local Method, who is a local Methodist minister, I should say, followed by Pastor Michael Wyckoff, pastor of the Joy Harvest Fellowship, also here in Lima. Next, Apostle Ryan Benroth of the Well Apostolic Center in Lima, Ohio. And rounding up our panel is Pastor Janet Wind of the Cornerstone Church here in Lima. Happy to have you all with us today on the program. It's great to be with you. Well, we are all armed with the questions that our viewers have sent us. And um, let's take this one first. Here it says, when people talk about God's will, what does that really mean? Does God have a will for your life? Or how do you know if you're following that will? How do you know that? You well, uh, maybe I'll start on that okay. one. Um, you know, we have, I guess, what we'll call God's general will, mm -hmm. and then his will for you, mm -hmm. okay? And of course, I think we need to say that the general will is reflected in the Bible, what, what God wants in, in your life. I mean, he wants all to be saved and so forth. Um, so I think we have a, a clear and simple guide to that. But uh, who do I marry? What job do I take? Where do I move? Uh, you know, where do I invest my money and so forth? Well, that's, that's for you. So we'll, he has his general will and then he has specific will. And that's why uh, we, well, first of all, for the general will, we need to know, um, we need to know the Bible. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of up to us pastors to teach that in our congregations, but, but it's up to, you know, folks out there to, get to know what's in the Bible because a lot of times I hear questions that are very plainly answered in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's number one. But when it comes to uh, the specific will, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Mm -hmm. And so we can say the general will comes through the word and God's specific will comes through relationship. Mm -hmm. Having a relationship with the Father, relationship with Jesus, you know, and, and, and you know, God will speak to you down here, mm -hmm. you know, and there's that's another topic as to how he does that, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, uh, I, and I guess really, well, I don't hear from God. Well, ask, uh, seek, and knock. You know, if you ask, you don't hear anything, well, just start seeking. And if you don't hear, get anything from seeking, start pounding on the door, you know. <laughs> He'll answer you. It, Go ahead. Yeah, I, I appreciate that perspective, like at the personal level. Right. But I think a lot of times people have questions about God's will in a much broader okay. category. Good point. And so one of the things that you know, we talk about in theology is God's ultimate will. And so things that aren't going to change, things that mm. throughout human history are going to happen because yeah. God's sovereignty says it will be so. Good point. And that nothing that man does is going to change that, yeah. mm -hmm. right? The outcome, uh, we read Revelation, God wins in the end. Right. The devil <laughs> doesn't get a vote you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So that there's Good. the ultimate will of God that's going to be accomplished. But we also talk about the, the intentional will of God, mm. right? It's God's desire that none should be lost, but that all right. should become saved. Does that mean that everybody's mm. going to be saved? No. no. God's desire is, but because he gives us free will, there will be some who choose not to, mm -hmm. right? Who reject God, who go their own way. And so, you know, everything that you said is 100% true, right. but I think sometimes that, that larger framework mm -hmm. is also at play where people get hung up on, well, is it God's will, you know, that this car accident happened? Yeah. Well, God gives us free will. Yeah. Somebody made a mistake, yeah. right? Somebody, somebody made an error, yeah. right? I, you'll never convince me at the core of my being that God intends for somebody to be a drug addict, mm. but because of sin, there's a redemptive power of God and God right. can use everything. Yeah, absolutely. What you're saying is good. He to, gives, can, oh, go ahead. Say, what he just said is good because can you imagine the people, I know you're big on talking about the anxiety and I want you to talk about that, that, that people are suffering right now. Some people are struggling because yeah. of past events like the car accident you just mentioned and they, they, they're sick, they, they just shut down until they, God, why, why? I, I can't move until you tell me why that accident happened or something like that, you know? 
Yeah, Can you help and them? I love what he was saying, and I think it's so important for people to understand that you have to first stand on the Word of God. God is never going to tell us something that contradicts His already general revealed will to us. Mm -hmm. So it, His his general revealed will is already in the word and that's why it's so important for us to know that. Mm -hmm. And there are the, the uh, exact things that, that Rich explained here. And so it's important for people to um, understand though that God is good. He is good, he is good all the time. And our experience does not change who God is. So I can experience things in my life. The Bible said, everyone's going to experience storms, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, no matter who we are, yeah. we are going to, it didn't say, uh, uh, if you get saved, you're never going to have any storms in your life. No, it, it, Jesus is there to take us to the yeah. other side, to take us through the storms, but we are going to experience those things. Yeah. And I'd like to just go back for a moment and just kind of touch on what you were touching on, because I find so many people asking me this and they're so interested and want to know their own, the personal will for their own life because yeah. the specific will goes back to the Holy Spirit. And um, there's a couple things that I always teach people. It's so important to know. Um, one is the inner witness and the other is the inner voice because mm -hmm. the Holy right. Spirit is resident on the mm -hmm. inside of us. The mm -hmm. Bible says that mm -hmm. he comes to dwell on the inside of us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He is there to teach us, to lead us, to guide us into all truth. And so if we will get to know him as a person. And so there are things like when they said, um, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. It was that leading, that inner witness. And we've all had it at times where you feel like you should do something and you do it. And then you realize that was God telling me that. You have other times where you feel like, uh oh, don't do that. Don't yes, do that. Yes. And sometimes we do it and we think, I shouldn't have done that. That, was, that <laughs> yeah. was God trying to tell me. That's that inner witness of him witness. bearing witness. Yeah. And then there's also that inner voice where they said, the spirit said mm -hmm. unto them, mm -hmm. separate me, mm -hmm. you know, Born Paul and Barnabas. Yes. And so y y we have those times where he said what they were supposed to do. So there's both. And as right. we develop that relationship, yeah. then absolutely we come yeah. into the understanding of the specific yeah. will of God for yeah. our lives. Key is relationship, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Just, just one thing to emphasize real quick, one sentence, not everything, and maybe some pastors are uh, people might disagree with this. Not everything that happens is God's will. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. The car accident. God can win with any hand and out of that accident, some good things may happen. Sure. Oh, well, it was God's will then. No, no. but he yeah. can make uh, good out of evil. So, Correct. We, we, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. In theology, they call that God's permissive will. Permissive, yeah, right? right? It doesn't right. take away from his control of the situation, exactly. but it's because of free will. Right. He yes. allows things to happen. Right. <laughs> I thought you were going to count me. I, like, well, I, I can. Go right I didn't in. know if we were moving on. Um, but a couple things come to mind, uh, you know, with Jesus even praying, not my will, but mm. yours well, be done. Right. So sometimes there's a disconnect between yeah. our will mm. and the will of God. Good. And uh, we need to adjust, perhaps. Good. Good. <laughs> and then also will... even Jesus giving the Lord's Prayer, he says, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that to me is one good way to maybe maybe on bigger picture things. Uh, it's like if this isn't happening in heaven, then it's not God's right. will. Yeah. You know, even yeah. though just because it happened on earth doesn't mean it's a will of God in heaven. You know, we're still to pray the will of God to happen here on earth as it okay. is in heaven. Okay. Oh, you want to fit? Go ahead. I was just going to tag on to that when he had talked about Jesus and he had to surrender his will to the will of the Father. And we have to do the same. Mm -hmm. I oftentimes find myself <clears throat> just thinking about giving over what it is I want. If I'm seeking God for uh, his will in a particular situation, giving that over to him, my will, what mm -hmm. I want, the thing I want to hear, I give that <laughs> over to him because otherwise, the only thing I'm going to hear is what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm willing to surrender over yeah. what I want yeah. to hear, it pro it'll prevent me from hearing really what, what God's will is and what yeah, He wants to reveal. You've got to reduce flesh in your life because flesh is so subjective. 
And, and so that you can be more objective to hear from well, the Well, that's spirit. 100%. Yeah. And I think that's where the anger comes in. It's that <laughs> loss of control. Yes. Right? It's recognizing <laughs> right. that I'm not in control and right. that God is, and I get angry about that. Yeah. So I lash out at God when in reality I should be humbling myself and recognizing I may not understand it now, God, but you have a better plan than I do. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And that kind of goes back to your question there, too, with um, anxiety and mm -hmm. saying, asking why. It's like, well, we don't actually have to know all the whys um, because God gives us peace that passes understanding. Mm -hmm. So it's like we're going to skip this understanding and knowing the whys and just dwell in his peace. That is absolutely possible. Now, let me, let me bring up another question from a viewer here that ties into God's will the same way. Um, the, the viewer says, I come from a family of successful lawyers. I want to go into full-time ministry, but my father and uncles do not think it's a good idea. They think I should follow the family's law firm and just be involved in the church. But I can't take the idea... I can't shake the idea that I am being called into something mm -hmm. different. How did, how did you know that you were called into the ministry? So the viewer is asking, you know, how, how did you know individually that you were called as opposed to doing something else in your life? Mm -hmm. Who wants to tackle that? Well, uh, for me, my experience was one hearing from God personally for you. Like you can't walk out something in faith that you don't actually have a word for. Mm -hmm. And so there was a day where God, I was not always in ministry, and there was a day that God told me that you were gonna be in full-time ministry and healing is gonna be a big part of it. Mm -hmm. So I began partnering with that word and preparing for such a thing. It wasn't like the next day I you know, quit my job and went into ministry, like there's a, a preparation and a walking out of that. Oh, yes. And then uh, I also think that, and I recognize that not everybody has this in their church culture, but having a prophetic word to confirm yes. what you believe God has been speaking to you or calling you in yes. is certainly a really helpful thing also. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because you can say that God said this, but when somebody else confirms it without knowing any of that context or experience that you've had with the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, that that's a, a public, a more public recognition of what God's doing in your life rather than just you saying, well, I'm this. <laughs> it's like, and, and having been around youth ministry for a while, parents <laughs> who are Christians, who are well-meaning and involved in the church have a sense of how much pastors get paid. Yeah. <laughs> right? They, and, they, and if they're involved in church at all, they know that sometimes church can be ugly and have conflicts. And so they're trying to, in an appearance of trying to save their kids from a, a career path that might bring hardship and difficulty and struggle, they're actually steering them away from the will of God. And yeah. so the scripture that came to mind for me was uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. Do not think that I've come to bring peace to the earth. I've mm -hmm. not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I've come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his house own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that's just talking about the gospel in general, mm -hmm. like following Jesus or not following Jesus. I think that's God's plan, God's will for your life as well, that mm -hmm. you, you have to be focused on listening to His voice above yes. all the others. Yes. And there is wisdom in a multitude of counselors sure, and we want to sure. go to the church, we want to go to pastors in our family as so much as they're following the Lord, but they never trump God's word to you. Right. Right. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. No. In, in that too, you can't expect other people to carry the faith of the word that has been given to you. Mm -hmm. Like they, they don't get, that word wasn't spoken to them. Mm -hmm. It was spoken to you. Yeah, yeah, so right. faith comes by hearing the word of, God, lot of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if they haven't heard that word, it's like, it gets a little scary. It's like, I don't know if I believe that, but if it's yours, then it's yours to walk yeah, out, yeah, not theirs. Yours, yeah. And it always requires faith. Yeah. You know, you, you're never going to know 100%. Mm -hmm. Without faith, yeah. it's impossible yeah. to please yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember, uh, even for myself as well, being involved in the business world and 
knowing that I had a call of God and to step out and do that. And same thing, my parents were like, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah. later when it proved out to See be that. God, they yeah. were real happy about it. But in mm -hmm. the meantime, you have to put your faith in what God's called you to. And sometimes that can be lonely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And really, you will never be, I don't know who you are out there if you're listening, but you will never be satisfied with your life. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you will never reach fulfillment, no matter how successful you become in the other area, no matter how much money you make, mm -hmm. um, no matter how much you please others. And by the way, they're not your God that, to whom you're going to be accountable. You right. You know, it's mm -hmm. God that you're accountable to, number one. And number two, you will not be fulfilled until you live in his word, in his way, in his will. That sums it up very well. Uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I'd like you to address a question from a viewer that's uh, struggling because they're angry at God because of certain circumstances mm. in their lives. And we'll get to that question and more in a moment right after this. Stay with us. <laughs> Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back and thank you for staying with us. Another question from a viewer. I have been enduring several years of struggle, several years, the, the person says, and I'm finding myself angry with God, even doubting his existence. I really want to keep believing. Help me in my struggles. Now, we don't know, of course, the specifics of what that individual is dealing with, but um, as much as, as you possibly can, how, how would you address this concern? I think that goes back to what we were talking about, of the fact that I find so many Christians get this concept that if they accept Jesus into their life, that life is going to be a bed of roses. Everything's going to be wonderful. Yeah. They're not going to have any struggles. They're not going to have any issues. And the Bible does not teach us that at all. Mm -hmm. You can look at every person's life in the Bible and you can see a life of struggle, but God delivering them out of it. Look at Joseph and all the years and all the struggles that he went through. Look, at, you can look at every person in the word. Jesus. And so I think we absolutely, I think people have to have a proper understanding that God didn't say you weren't going to have any struggles. He said that he would be with you in them yes. and that he would bring you through them. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said earlier, I think if we have that understanding that God is a good God, no matter if we understand everything mm -hmm. that we're experiencing or not, because um, his word is true. It's not our experience. Sometimes we can have a fact. A fact is not truth. So mm -hmm. we can have a fact of something we're experiencing, whether it's a sickness, whether it's a lack, whether it's whatever situation, a relationship issue that we're in, but that's not truth. And that's where I think a lot of times people get confused. It's interesting how you make that distinction between a fact and truth. That's mm -hmm. They're not yeah. the same. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> something that's true, but not truth. Yeah. I think the other thing is, well, Jesus, Yes. He had struggles. Absolutely. So, you know, and he was, you know, he took the form of a man. He gave up his mighty power and glory, came down and took upon him, you know, a lot of the things that we have to put up and left the perks of heaven behind. I think the other thing we have to remember, too, though, is that, and I've been mad at God, okay? So, you know, in the past, uh, recently, though, the more I learn about God and that he's a good yes, God yes. and that we do have an enemy, Mm -hmm. We do have a flesh. We do make wrong decisions mm -hmm. and there are consequences right. to our oh. own decisions. Correct. God does not push every button. You know, we say God's in control and I, it's true, but I think I like to say God's in charge because, you know, my little grandson once, you know, my, my son would always say God's in, ch you know, in control, but his son went in and opened the fridge and drunk the amoxicillin that he was on, you know, because he had an earache, you know, because it's that cherry flavor that everybody, that all these little kids like. He drank the whole thing. He ended up being okay. But it's like, you know, wait a minute now, you know, son, you, are you not in charge of the house, but you're not in control of everything. You know, God has given us, 
you know, a place in this earth yeah. and we are free moral agents and so forth. And I think the other thing too is, you know, when you look at God, well, why did God allow this to happen? This is sort of getting into the same thing again. We were talking about God's will. Somebody needs it out there. But, okay. but okay, but you know, Jesus, I heard someone say this, so I, I'm not the originator of this expression, but it's so true. Jesus is perfect theology. How many times did Jesus say, I'm gonna make you suffer to make you a better Christian? I'm going to, or someone came to him and said, you know, Lord, heal me. No, no, I think you just need to stay sick to make you a stronger Christian. Mm -hmm. He never said that. And, yeah. I, and, and so anything that you believe about God that doesn't line up with what Jesus said, what he represented and what he did, you have reason to doubt your theology about God. Correct, mm -hmm. yes. And I, th I think too, uh, you know, I'm reading this question differently now. Okay. It's the several, and you guys had it right, I, I misread it, but it's the several years of struggle what is, mm. it, is why they're finding themselves angry at God mm -hmm. and questioning whether he's there. It's, it's like God's not okay. responding in the mm -hmm. timetable that I have laid out. Mm, right. Like, why am I still here in the pit? And again, the Joseph yeah. story, right. it's right. like there's so many reasons to question, God, how are you going to show up? And, right. and wh why do I have to continue to suffer as the innocent party here? Mm -hmm. And, you know, my suggestion would just be read the Psalms. And, and pray through the Psalms mm -hmm. and see, see David's journey and, and all the others there of giving thanks to God, of praising God, of being angry at God and questioning God. That's all okay. He's yes. big enough. Right. Yes. He can handle it. So you are not offending him right. by, by going to him with the sincerity of the heart if the intent is to have this deep conversation, but allowing then God to answer. There was a moment in my life, what I'll call my dark night of the soul, when uh, the situation that I was in only got worse seemed the more I prayed and fasted. Mm -hmm. But in the middle of a, of a prayer session uh, and hours of crying and reading scripture and, and just being numb, I, I heard a faint, not audible voice, but a, a voice to mm -hmm. my spirit of God whispering, you are not alone. Mm -hmm. Now, the situation got worse. Yeah. <laughs> um, it went on for months. But there was a peace that, that was God's, yes. That was Jesus is speaking over the stormy sea, peace be still. That was God's peace in my life that regardless of what was happening on the outside, I was at peace on the inside. I wasn't happy about it. I didn't like the situation, but I, I finally made sense of all the theology that I knew, mm -hmm. but it had caught up with myself and my emotion to say, mm -hmm. I know I'm in this alone. I don't have answer, or I'm, I'm, I'm in this, but I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. I don't have all the answers, but God does. Mm -hmm. And in the Psalms, I love how many times David went, just like you said, full circle. Yeah. And he yeah. always got back to Multiple you. Multiple times. But yet yeah, will right, I praise right, you, right. you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm sure we've all been there. I've been there myself where you just when crying. When are you gonna answer me? When are you <laughs> yeah, gonna help exactly, me? I'm sinking, exactly. I'm up to my neck. But you come back <laughs> yeah, to, right, right. yet will I praise you. And <laughs> right. I love, I love the scripture too that talks about, you know, though there be no fig on the trees, though there be no right. cattle in the stalls, you know, it, 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 it's not about any of that. It, it becomes about God, just that I would know you. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. David cried out, just yep. that you would not take your Holy Spirit from me, just that mm -hmm. I would know you, just mm -hmm. that I would. And it's, it's those things work in us and work through us yeah. to bring us really to that perfect place of being that reflection of him. I think so many times we don't realize too that God's transforming us from glory to glory mm. into his image and into wow. his likeness more and more. And it's through that fire. How do you purify gold? You stick it in the fire so everything that's mixture, everything that's impure can come to the surface, be drawn off so it can be purified. Mm -hmm. And uh, we go through the fire so that Bible says, don't think these fiery trials strange. You go in the fire so that the things that are not of God can be purified and come on, so out of us and um, mm -hmm. God and his kingdom look at things so differently than we do. <laughs> and, and just so quickly, the, where the people in scripture, especially in the Old Testament, New Testament went wrong, is when 
they felt like God didn't answer on their timeline, yes. they tried something else. Yes. Yes. And I, I would just encourage you in the middle of your struggle, keep going to Him. Yes. There is no answer apart from Him. Right. Right. Keep going to Him. Yes. Keep trusting Him. And I would say when you're weak, you need the community of believers around you. I, you didn't say it, but I get the sense that you've isolated yourself from the body, mm. that, you, that you're not connected to a spiritual community. You are not going to stand on your own and apart from the body and apart from people mm -hmm. speaking into you and holding you up sure. when you can't hold yourself up. That's so great good. counsel, great counsel, so appreciate good. that. Another question I'd like to get into before we end this program here, is premarital <laughs> counseling really necessary? <laughs> Let's say it all together. Is, is, One, two, three. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Take it away. Go ahead. ahead. Uh, all I could say is I wish that I knew what I'm saying to couples before they get married. I wish I knew those things it would, you know, I, that I learned the hard way. Right. And please get counseling from obviously a good, uh, you know, Bible believing pastor or somebody mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> when you're when you're early in a relationship I guess it seems pretty easy to think that like it's going to be wonderful forever <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. but yeah. anybody who's actually been married for a time yeah. knows that you're you get into difficult t situations you, you get conflicts because yeah. it's like oh I didn't know this about you until we started <laughs> living together and <laughs> right. it's like well we got to be able to handle those things well mm -hmm. and be able to continue to love each other even when the other person isn't perfect mm -hmm. or exactly how we would like them to be mm -hmm. because that is God's approach to us you know a husband and wife relationship is lacking to God's relationship with us it's like even though we're not perfect we don't have it all together all the time he continues to pour out his love on us and he's never going to leave us he's never going to forsake us and um, I think for me, what I always recommend to uh, young couples is seek inner healing deliverance ministry because it's going to be a whole lot better if you don't bring in your woundedness and mm -hmm. junk into the relationship. And also learn how to love each other and because we receive love in different ways. Mm -hmm. And it, if we don't understand those things, then we just continually engage in a, a relationship of frustration and we got to learn how to communicate you got to learn some of these foundational things uh, it's easier to set that foundation early mm -hmm. rather than to figure out oh we're missing a chunk of our foundation and we got to put it in later right. uh, it's like build on something that's sure right away and really you got to come in with a little bit of humility and realizing that I don't necessarily have everything figured out quite yet. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. we've got only about 30 seconds left, so I guess we'll try to end it there, but um, I'd advise anybody out there that's getting ready to get married uh, that you get premarital counseling. Mm -hmm. And Pastor, you're absolutely right. Get it from a Bible believer. Get that Christian foundation so that um, it'll help you in your in your life to be successful. Mm -hmm. Marriage takes work. Yes, it does. It takes work. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's our program for today. Some good news for you, though. This same panel will be back next week again as we answer more of your questions. So be sure you tune in again next week to get more of all the goodies that they have to pass out to us. Okay. <laughs> that's all for today. Until next week and next time. God bless you for now. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. 
Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at wtlw.com.